Let's pray. God, we thank you that you did love us this much. We thank you for this opportunity to come and to begin this Lenten journey together these 40 days, Lord, as we consider your sacrifice and what that means for us. I pray tonight, Lord, that you would be in this place, that you would heal our wounds, that you would come in, and that we would be reminded how important we are to you. We thank you, Lord. We begin our time of worship tonight in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, amen. Let's sing. You gave 
That, that your love for us is what drove you to that cross. You knew that that was the only way that we could be restored for what happened in the garden. God, we thank you so much that you gave your life for us because of your love. And all God's people said, Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm Pastor Tim. Those of you online, good evening. Good to be here with you. Um, you know, a uh, lot's going on in the world. Would you agree? Uh, you know, continue to keep our Ukrainian friends and friends around the world in your prayers, uh, certainly for peace um, in homes and in our communities. Um, and, you know, Lent is just one of those times when, when I think it lends itself for a time of of sort of silence and recentering uh, around the things that matter, right? Uh, there's so many things that maybe have captured our attention over the last couple years, and, and maybe that's the invitation God has for us here over these next 40 days is, is for him to, to be the center of our lives. In fact, you know, when we think about giving, um, the Bible says that we give because he first gave to us. We love because he first loved us. A couple weeks ago, I was down in, in Arizona with our team we were presenting, and, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was fascinating because uh, several folks, several folks that I didn't even know came up to me, and we had these name tags, and like, oh, you're from our Savior. You know, I, I grew up there, and, and now I'm, I'm leading a youth ministry. Or, or like, there, there are a couple pastors who've come through here, and, and I, I knew their names, but putting their faces with the names, and, and they said, you know, go back and tell them thank you. Thank you for the prayers and for the support. And, and you know, so, you know, as a church, I just want to say thank you for your faithfulness, for being like Jesus, for loving people and, and living like him, even with our time and our finances. And um, I always say we don't give to church, all right? We don't give to church. We give through a church, but we don't give through a to a church, because um, Jesus has already given everything that we need and have to us. And so um, may maybe you, you feel led to give. Uh, you can give online. Uh, you can go to our website. You can go through the app or simply uh, here in person. There's boxes in the back. So uh, feel free to use that as your offering time in that special way here today. All right? Hey, find a Bible. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah tonight. And as you see, uh, we have communion. Man, when was the last time we saw some of these communion pieces? I mean, uh, it's been a couple of years. And so uh, we're going to give it a try, all right? Yeah. We're going to give it a try safely and wisely. This is not like we're rushing in. I, I told our team this, this transition back, it's more like an evolution, a slow evolution than a quick revolution. And so uh, we're going to do it wisely and safely, and I'll explain a little bit more when we get to our communion time tonight. And we still have communion kits for those who want to choose that option tonight as well, which, which is always a good thing. All right. Um, but, you know, when, when we think about Lent and Ash Wednesday, believe it or not, uh, maybe you knew this, maybe you didn't, Ash Wednesday is nowhere to be found in the Bible, all right? 
Uh, you, you can search every page of your Bible and you aren't gonna find Ash or Wednesday together anywhere on these pages. So, you know, the, the question is, where did it come from? Uh, I was hanging with some, some youth here earlier tonight and Ash came up, they're like, where did Ash Wednesday come from? And uh, they were sharing, they're like, maybe, maybe it's like, like something, like in the sign of the cross, like something with Jesus. It's like, that's, that's, that's a pretty good guess, like something with Jesus. Um, but here's a little history, all right? Um, Ash Wednesday, it started back in the 6th to 8th century. Um, actually, you can go back a little earlier to around the year 325, and for history buffs, uh, that was the Council of Nicaea, where we got what we know as the Nicene Creed, the summary of our faith, one of the summaries of our faith. And what, what it would be, it would be this time when, when they would focus, the early church would focus on repentance, uh, on humility, on, on the sense of fasting and, and remorse. And, you know, you fast forward to today and, you know, there's anxiety and depression. And, and from the outside, it might look like Ash Wednesday is one of these really dark, depressing moments. And yet, in the middle of the darkness, there's light. In the middle of hopelessness, there's hope. That, that the early church, they would combine the ashes and the sign of the cross, which, which would remind us of our frailty and our humanity and how, how fragile it is for dust you are to dust you will return. And yet, the sign of the cross, it would, would remind us of the covenant promise that we have in our baptism, that we are called children of God, that we have the promise of eternal life, of forgiveness, and so for, for centuries, that would, that would be the narrative that would kick off this 40-day season of Lent. And so 40 days, uh, it's, really, it's really about 48 days because you have to take out the Sundays. Sundays are kind of like a mini Easter. So when you come to worship on this Sunday, we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate the resurrection. But uh, as we walk through our weeks, uh, it's this, this focus on who God is, who we are, and who God is recreating us to be, and so uh, it, it's a time of renewal. It's a ti- time of of finding those turning points and turning toward Jesus and asking those questions like we're asking over the next few weeks. You know, Jesus, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? Um, how, how is it that I'm a part of what you're doing, not just in my life but in the world? Um, because God is still working. God is still at work. Um, so you received this sermon note card, go ahead and take that out here, um, and, and you'll need this in your Bible, just for a few moments together, and then we'll, we'll have some ministry response time, all right? Uh, you can see the opportunities to, to walk. We're going to take a walk through Lent, all right? I don't know about you, I like walks. Uh, we're going to walk through Lent, Sundays, turning points, 9 and 10.30, and then midweek, 1 o'clock in person, all right, and 7 o'clock online. What time in person? And then online is? 1 o'clock is? And seven o'clock is, all right, capiche? Capiche, all right, great. And then, um, uh, you know, there's a little, little blurb on what is Lent. And this is just a really great reminder. Uh, this is how we're going to walk through Lent between now and, and really Palm Sunday. And then uh, we'll continue our walk through Holy Week leading up to Easter. Um, on the other side here, though, uh, there's, there's three ways that we can really focus on what we're going to be doing during this walk, all right? And it's right here in Isaiah 59. So if you open your Bibles to Isaiah 59, all right, page 618, uh, we're just going to walk through some of these verses here together and um, begin this journey. Because Lent, uh, as I said, uh, it, it's really about repentance, recentering on the things that really matter, and it always leads us to grace. It leads us to forgiveness. It leads us to Jesus. So kids, big kids, little kids, find the color purple, all right? Point to it. Maybe the only time you can point to something. So find the color purple somewhere. Maybe it's behind me. Maybe it's around you. You see it, all right? How many, how many places do you see the color purple? Purple, by the way, is the color of of contrition or, or repentance, of saying I'm sorry. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a color of royalty and saying that we are royal people because not only we say we're sorry, but because Jesus has forgiven us. So, so every time you come to church, kids, look for the color purple, all right? Between now and Easter, color purple. Um, but here, here, here's three things, all right? You can jot down some notes as we go. Um, the first thing we do in Lent on this walk is we recognize our sin. Uh, we, we repent of our sin. And, and right here in verse 12, Isaiah 59, verse 12, it says this. For our offenses are many in your sight, 
and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our what? Iniquities, our shortcomings, our failures, where we've missed the mark. I mean, isn't that true? So many times, so many places, we've missed the mark. We've trespassed, we've crossed the line in our hearts, in our feelings, in our words, in our actions. Uh, I, I like how one kid puts it, um, the sin of omission, right? There's sins of commission where, where we willfully cross the line, where we willingly miss the mark, where we willingly break that which God has specifically said no to. Um, the sin of omission, I love how one kid puts it. He says, sins, oh, sins of omission are sins we should have committed but didn't, just didn't get around to. Um, <laughs> But, but I mean, that, that's, that's really a huge step in this journey. As we walk, it's, it's this posture of humility, of repentance, of acknowledging there, there's something that needs to be changed. There's something that's broken. And, and we might not know it, we might know it, but it's simply the acknowledgement that something needs to change. That while we know we are not perfect, we know that things could be different. But then we read on. What's, what's really wrong? It kind of puts words to maybe some of the things we feel in our world today, uh, maybe about our own lives uh, in some portion, parts of our lives. Verse 13 uh, explains what, what the sin, this iniquity is. Rebellion and treachery against the Lord. Turning our backs on our God. Inciting revolt and oppression. Uttering lies our hearts have conceived. And so justice, as a result of all that, justice, that which is right, is driven back. So, so now rightness is not in the world, wrongness is. And righteousness stands now at a distance. It's, it's, not, it's not near, it's not able to be reached. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Hello, right? Truth has stumbled in the streets, and so honesty cannot enter. There's this block between truth and honesty and, and where we're at. Verse 15, truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes prey. And then the Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice, that the scales were not balanced, that something isn't right, that a change needs to happen. Which leads us to the second thing that that we're looking for along the way as we walk through Lent together. Uh, We're looking for ways we can look away from ourselves and look toward Jesus. Look away from ourselves and look toward Jesus. And it continues like this, verse 16. He saw that there was no one. Wasn't looking to you, wasn't looking to me. He's like, no one. (laughs) And he was appalled that there was no one to step in, no one to intervene. Nobody to come and rescue and know so his arm achieved salvation. So he had the plan. His arm achieved the salvation. And his own righteousness, it sustained him. So it wasn't you that could come to the rescue. It wasn't me that could come to the rescue. It wasn't some sort of human organization that could come to a rescue. It wasn't a government that could come to the rescue. It's not anything made of human hands that could rescue, but only God and God alone could rescue And when we are along this walk, we're we're constantly looking away from ourselves and looking toward Jesus, toward Jesus. So this is what he does, verse 17. He puts on righteousness as his breastplate, puts on this armor, this clothing, all right? This thing that, that protects his chest and his heart, all the vital organs. He puts on righteousness, this perfection, this sense of, of all the wrongs are gonna be made right. The helmet of salvation is on his head. There's confidence, not only in his mind, but that which controls his entire body. It's it's protected with the salvation, with, with rescue, and he puts on garments of vengeance, wrapped himself in zeal, as in a cloak, so he's wrapped himself in, in this attractiveness, this, this wooing back to something that is so beautiful that, that maybe we've lost sight of. And we see this in the cross, right? We see this as Jesus is dying on the cross. 
He, he's wrapped up in this mystery, this, why, why, would, why would the Savior of the world be crucified, died, and buried? Well, it's for you. It's for me. It's because you and I, we cannot save ourselves, and so Jesus comes, sent from God himself. And so, so along the way, we're looking for ways to, to get the attention off of ourselves and, and look to the cross, look to Jesus and what he's done for us over and over and over again. Verse 18, this is what, what happens as he forgives us. And along the way, we see this, that according to what they have done, so he will repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. He will equal out the scales because of the payment of his life. All things will be made right. And so from the east and the west, people will fear the name of the Lord. There will be this respect, this awe, this unspoken wonder, reverence for Jesus. And from the rising of the sun, they will revere his what? His glory. If you haven't checked out last week's sermon, go ahead and do that. We talked about Jesus' glory. And it ends like this. For he will come like a pent-up flood. It will, it, will, it will hit you like a flood. You can't stop it. His grace, his love will, will hit you like a flood of water and that the breath of the Lord, it will drive it along. That God is gonna continue to, to wash over you with his love, with his forgiveness, with his life, with the reminder of who he is and who he's made you over and over again. That's what we discover on this walk through Lent. And so the Redeemer will come to Zion. That's Jesus. He, he will come he will come to you, Zion, the people of God, and to those in Jacob who do what? Repent of their sin. To turn, turn from the direction you're walking into another way, into Jesus' way, into another direction. Because in fact, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? So we recognize our sin, we repent, we look away from ourselves, and we look to Jesus. But there's one last thing. We leave, leave the sin behind. We live for Christ. Would you admit that maybe that's the hardest part of all this is leaving the sin behind? Um, it reminds me of a story I heard once. Uh, a kid, uh, he, he was not behaving well, all right, just not, they're out in public, they're at a mall or something, and, and the mom gets into the car, just flustered, parents, we know, we know these situations, and they get in the car, and, and mom says, you are so in trouble when you get home, you know, this is what the church talks about, this is what your Sunday school talks about, when, you, when they talk about sin, you are sinning right now, as her vein pops out of her neck, and just beat red, and the smart little kid says, well, you know, Mom, Jesus removes our sin from the, as far as the east is from the west. <laughs> and then he casts our sin into the depths of the sea. Mom, sitting there just still fuming, kind of composes herself and thinks to herself, hmm, that's true. So she responds, yeah, but when we get home, I'm going fishing for that sin. Now, we can laugh about that, right? But isn't that exactly what we do? Our sin is thrown into the depths of the sea. It's removed from us, but we pick it right back up. I mean, sometimes it's the sin of commission, and, and we know what we're doing, and so we willfully just break God's law. Sometimes it's the sin of omission, and we don't even know what we're doing, and <laughs> oops. Sometimes it's a sin that happens to us, and it's just the brokenness of the world. There's no rhyme or reason why, and it breaks life. It breaks our heart. It breaks our families. It breaks our world. And it just happens. I 
And if you're like me, you, you're walking around and we're, we're taking this walk through Lent and we look around and this is like my life. Just broken and shattered. Just goes everywhere. Sometimes it's unexpected. <laughs> Sometimes it's scary because it's like, whoa, what's going on? Sometimes you know exactly what you're doing and you do it anyway. You know I'm talking about kids, right? Big kids too. Tonight, we take the first step. We repent, we acknowledge our sin, we acknowledge the brokenness. We step into it. We look away from ourselves and look to Jesus, look to the cross. He gave his life away for you, for me. And tonight, we return that sin to the dust where it belongs. Because for dust we are, to dust we will return, but that's not how we will stay because the resurrection on Easter morning is coming. Tonight, um, there's these tables up here with broken pottery. Um, <laughs> some of it is sharp, so parents, um, if, if, when you bring your kids up, um, just be careful, all right? All um, right. There's also some Sharpie markers up here, and maybe there's a picture or a word that represents a piece of brokenness that you want to return to the dust this Ash Wednesday, this Lenten journey, and leave it here. You've repented of it. Jesus has died for it. He's forgiven it. And you need to leave it behind. We want to invite everyone. There, there's enough here. And if not, uh, if we run out, there's pieces on the floor. So, <laughs> <laughs> We also have communion. Um, communion is the food of Jesus that he places in us for his strength. To remind us we are forgiven. To remind us we do belong. And so tonight as we commune, uh, there's two stations. You'll, you'll come up to one of the stations via the side aisle in the back, all right? We haven't done this in a long time, all right? So side aisle to the back. So you'll go to the back and come along the side aisles and then loop through like this. Uh, there's communion kits, so if you'd like to commune with a communion kit, you just simply take that and somebody will help guide you through that. Uh, if you'd like to receive by what I call distribution, somebody placing a piece of bread in your hand or, and then uh, coming up and taking an individual cup of wine or grape juice, um, you can do that. Uh, grape juice is in the center of every tray. There's four cups of grape juice there and wine uh, or all the other cups there. And then you'll, you'll place your empty plastic kit cups right there in the trash cans by the table. And then there's baskets for your glass individual cups if you choose that. Uh, kids and those not communing, there'll be someone there just to pray a blessing over you as you go through, so don't miss that. And then in each corner of the front here, there'll be somebody with ashes to make the sign of the cross on your forehead and remind you, for dust you are, to dust you will return, but know the cross marks you as one redeemed and forgiven by Jesus. You can also choose to use this time to pray uh, about something specific or just pray in general. There will be some people in the back, right in front of this back window here, uh, to pray with you. Um, there's also, uh, we have the ability to anoint you tonight too. And that's just simply placing oil on your head to remind you that you are marked out as a loved one of Jesus. And so uh, take, take advantage of that as well during this response time. And so I'm gonna invite the band up here. Um, they're gonna lead us in, in worship and I wanna invite you to stand. As we hear the invitation of Jesus as we step into Lent here. Jesus, the night he was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body that's given for you. So do this to remember me. 
And then after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. So do this every time you celebrate this meal, communion together to remember me. And now may God's peace be with you all. All right, go ahead and be seated. I want to invite our servers to come forward. They'll commune here first, and once they get to the tables, uh, feel free again, make your way to the back, come along the sides, back, around, up here, and we're going to just spend the next 20 minutes in worship, prayer, communion, and song, all right?
that again. Turn your eyes. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strange. In the light of his glory and was lost walked away the road was dark I could not see my hope was gone the pain was real but your mercy you saw
By the way, there's two sides of the table, so if you guys want to come and walk around this whole space, just be careful when you walk up here. You can get to the other side of the table, and you don't have to wait in the line. So if you guys want to come around this way and this way, that's fine. Or you can come right down the middle. It's okay to cut in line here at our Savior Lutheran Church.
that you belong, you're part of this family, may he walk with you, not just over these 40 days, but for a lifetime, now until life everlasting, go in his peace, amen, amen. Hey, receive the blessing, you might hold out your hands to receive it as a gift tonight, the Lord bless you and keep you, 
The Lord make his face shine on you. Be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen? Amen. Hey, we'll see you Sunday, 9 and 10.30. Next week, 1 o'clock in person here, 7 o'clock online. Love you guys. Have a great night. Drive safe.